Your test today? <laughs> you won't live here without crying. My name is Antonio Sistelus. I'm a junt faculty and I teach uh, online. So I don't see my students, I don't see my colleagues, I live in the clouds. <laughs> uh, I was born in Brazil, so Portuguese is my first language. Uh, just a little bit of uh, introduction. I took French and German when I was at the younger age. Never was good in English. So now I'm here trying to speak in that language. So if I make mistakes, just don't pay attention to those things. Just write it down and you will learn more about how to speak English properly. Well, <laughs> um, so uh, it's my pleasure being here with you. Um, thank you so much for coming and staying for the second presentation. I really enjoyed the first presentation and uh, it's so uh, attached to what I'm going to talk about. It's amazing. I have a problem. So I'm going to start with this presentation and maybe I will show you some other things. But I have a couple of questions. Are you familiar with C maps, concept maps? How many of you are familiar with concept maps? Have you used it in your classroom? Okay. Was a good experience or an excellent experience? Wonderful. Uh, and about Prezi Web2 technology. Do you know any Web2 technologies available? Are you familiar with so so? Have you used Prezi for presentations? Okay, so this is classified under uh, Web2 technologies. So basically, I'm going to show you some things and what I have been doing with my students, face-to-face -face students, since I cannot do a research, I was not yet approved by the IRB, IRB because it deals with human subjects, so there's a lot of, <laughs> you need to be very cautious about that. But I have been observing my students in a face-to-face -face setting in Indiana, the great state of Indiana, that have more than one star. <laughs> Well, uh, don't pay attention to that part. So there, I teach face to face and I try to see what happens when I introduce a new way of interacting, thinking critically about the content that you are learning. So let's start with this. And my next step would be um, applying this online. OK. So excellence in teaching, the use of web uh, concept maps and Web2 technologies towards the development of higher order thinking skills. We have a little bit of content to follow. I will try to give you at the end a hands-on activity. You won't live here without suffering, paying the price of coming and staying. <laughs> and there is a grade associated with that which will follow you for the rest of your life. No, don't pay attention to that part too. Okay, so why I'm doing this? Why I care for my students? Because after salvation, and even before I started caring for people. They are so precious to me. My students, they are ex extremely important to me. They are what I call agents of change. They will become the ones that will guide me when I'm older. When I, their, their decisions will affect my life. So I want to make them conscious about what they are doing, about their time, about why they are there. So for we are his workmanship. This word workmanship, probably you know about it, is the, the same word poema, is the Greek word poema, which is the word poem in English, or poema in Portuguese. So we are a beautiful piece of writing, literature, written with blood and the cross. So Christ Jesus, when he died for us on the cross, he made us completely different person. Our students that come to a Christian institution they should have that kind of perception about us, watching them, caring for them. I want the best for you, and I will provide whatever I can to help you. But believe me, I did my best, and I do my best, and sometimes I get discouraged. I know who I am in Christ Jesus. I know about them. Some, they say, I'm a Christian. I'm trying to live my life. I try to apply whatever I'm learning here. This is my future, and I know that this is true. But this, these are some of the problems. Uh, how to develop intellectual self-confidence and foster intellectual authorship among my students. How to help my students to think critically and reflectively. Is technology a helpful or destructive nonsense? So 
all those things. I look at my face-to-face -face students and they are smiling to me. Do you know that I teach and they smile to me? All the time, they have a computer in front of them and they are smiling. And I, and I ask, are you enjoying my class? I bet you are. I believe you are. Oh, yeah, yeah. I say, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and sometimes I walk very softly. So sometimes I show up from behind. Hello, YouTube. What are you doing? Uh, well, I, this is connected with your class. I said, this? Not at all. It's impossible. <laughs> but let me ask you a question. Can you connect this content with your, with this content being presented? Huh? So that is the kind of attitude. So they look at me, sometimes they say, forgive me. I said, you are forgiven already. But don't do that again. You know that you're paying for me? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're paying for me, for my work here. So this is the kind of things that I, I face. So I teach computer science, and te I teach curriculum instruction, I teach business, I teach all kinds of, of things <laughs> related with computers, math, and education. So I got all kinds of communication um, problems, uh, about perception about life. One thing I want, when they leave my class, they must understand, number one, what I have taught, and how to connect this with their previous knowledge. I want that. If they leave my class with that understanding, okay, I learn how to use a function, talking about computer science, a function within my, uh, this is new in computer science. I'm going, instead of writing a code like linearly, I'm going to call a function, that function will perform something and will return something. That will make in my life easier. Can you see that in your program? Yes, I can. This is good. Can you see that? Not yet. Let's work on that. So, this is the kind of problems. Okay, so, well, I have two options. Stay with um, PowerPoint or jump to Prezi. I'm going to jump to Prezi. I think it's more interesting. And um, believe me, nothing wrong with PowerPoint presentations. PowerPoint presentations. Nothing. They, they share content. They are good. It's like an old book. And I, I'm old too, I'm not an old book, but I'm an old person. Not that old, but old. Older than all my students, most of them. And I say, hey, do you think I'm, I'm dead already? I, I don't have plans or expectations for my life? You must have twice more than me, 10 times more than me. You're much younger than me. So, technology, I love technology. I love everything that is new, but must be important. So let me shift to my Prezi presentation, is, which is in some place here. We have already talked about this. Oops. <laughs> it's not working, but it will. Okay. Okay, we have seen this. We know who you are in Christ Jesus. We have already talked about the problem. Now we are talking about higher order thinking skills. Do you know about the definitions? Do you know anything about higher order thinking skills? What, how would you define higher order thinking skills or higher order thinking? Let me help you. It's thinking inside of a box. Is that right? No creativity. No problem solving skills. Is that how we think crit critically or high, uh, using higher order thinking skills? Not at all. So I have some. Uh, Some definitions can be conceptualized as a non-algorithm complex mode of thinking that often generates multiple solutions. I'm also always interested, can you see a new application of this? Can you see how to use this content in a different way? Because the books tell us what to do with this. But I want you to redo the thinking. I want to redo the concept. I want to reapply that concept in a new situation. And believe me, teaching, in all those subjects that I mentioned to you, quite often I see the same thing rewritten. I say, hey, I know about this. <laughs> this is systems analysis and design. I know about this. This is something else. Okay. So, also, higher order thinking skills corresponds to the overlapping levels of comprehension above understanding using Bloom's taxonomy. You know that. Applying, evaluating, analyzing, synthesizing. I want that. I want you to explain to me what I have explained to you. So this is important to me. Um, also encompasses critical, systematic, and creative thinking. 
Now you can see that a PowerPoint presentation, which is nice, is kind of static. I'm adding here some effects. I'm zooming in from point to point. So students, younger, especially younger students, they tend to appreciate more of those things. Not for learning, <laughs> not for presenting, but for playing with something. Are you guys following me? So the idea is I'm fishing with my students, and I want to attract them to the bait. Is this a word in English, a bait? So I want them to come to me. I want them to eat what I'm offering. And I will, instead of eating them, <laughs> I will transform them. I want followers. I want them to follow me. Say, hey, I want to be like you. I want to, you know, do something with my life and make it more useful. This is what I want to hear from my students. I don't want to see anything less than that. Okay, so now we know that higher order thinking skills are extremely important in our students. It's thinking out of, out of the box. It's, is as you talk, as you present the content, they must jump to you and say, hey, I know this, I, can, I have used this before, can I do this way too? Can I apply it this way? Is this valid thinking? I want those kind of questions. But also, remember their attitude. They smile to me as I teach. They love to, they enjoy my class. So they're watching a video, they're trying to do something, to use that time for something else, but not learning. Okay, so I found out that when I was teaching, I said, hey, let me talk about something. You have this concept here alone, and that means something else, like a programming language. I will stay with computer science since I'm talking about technology, computer language. You can do a lot of things with computer language, from writing a message on, this, on your screen, say, hello world, <laughs> or creating a system, a program, such as Prezi. So computer science. This is programming language. So we have, we are learning about languages. What can, what, what, what is a computer language? So define it for me. The book defines with your own words. They almost copy the definition from the book. What can you do with this? Mm. A program that runs in small devices like your cell phone. Hmm. Is there a technology for that? Yeah, there is a technology. Or you may use it for mainframes, more uh, robust uh, applications. Okay, so let's draw circles about things that you are learning. So this is the idea of concept maps, if you don't know, but I believe you know it. And I will show you uh, examples of that. So concept maps. Concept map is a graphical tool, it's two-dimensional, and are represented in a hierarchical fashion with the most inclusive concepts on the top of the map and more specific concepts arranged hierarchically. Hierarch here. How do you say that word? Oh, you are awake. Good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, tactics. Tactics? Tactics? So, keywords, concepts, focus question, linking words or linking phrases. All those things you can learn alone. You can go to do Google about concept maps and see a lot of examples. So it's how to connect with your students and make them to connect with the content being presented. Okay. Also, cross links, prop uh, propositions, and uh, units of meaning. Okay. So I want my students to think out of the box. I want them to produce solutions for problems. I don't want them just copying what I write or copying, which, which is the, the, the hardest part. Master's level class, teaching face-to-face -face or online. I teach both. And all of a sudden, you have a Word document completely out of shape. That means uh, spacing in different paragraphs, different spacing, different I fonts, I look at, what's that? <laughs> was a copy and paste. It's directly from a, a web page. I said, I don't believe. I don't believe. It's impossible. Nobody can do that consciously. It must be, it must have a problem. So how do you call that thing? How do you call that? Plagiarism. This is not a, uh, something that we are, um, we will not sin. Most of the times, we may copy things, but 
also most of the times we give credit to, credits to the origin of that information. If you don't remember, nobody will kill you. But as soon as you remember, oh, okay, this is not my thinking. That was from some other place. Okay, give credits. I like when people, they give credits to what I say. So why not to do the same thing? So when I see my students copying and pasting, I said, you are, you are dead. You shouldn't be doing this. I have a solid C, a solid B. What are my chances of getting an A? I said, none. N it's impossible. If you add everything that you have, you won't get there. You cannot do that. It's impossible. So as I teach, I want them to think, to be responsible for their writings, for their research. I want them to have a pleasure. I know it's hard to study. I think I was the only one on this earth that had pleasure of studying. <laughs> Dedicating my hope. When I was very young, no soccer player, not playing soccer, nothing. I was just dedicated to my study. Do you believe that? Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> But I believe you did, especially you, my friend. How about you? Were you like me or like half and half? Mom and dad saying, hey, what are you doing? I'm paying your studies. Go back, sit down, study. Have you done that before? Have you heard that? <laughs> this is reality. So I want them to put in action. I want them to write at least one sentence and say, this is my <laughs> writing. I want them to do that. So I start thinking about ways of doing this. And um, I said, well, number one, I, you need to connect the information, previous knowledge and present knowledge, leading to uh, shake all, everything that you know. I want you to put in a, like a, in a pan, stir, and when everything settles down, you are able to see the new connections about what was taught what is new teaching and what is old teaching, new concepts, new connections, maybe you come up with a solution, maybe you come up with something new, maybe you will, you will just rewrite what was written but under new uh, circumstances. This is what I want. So I start thinking about high order thinking skills and concept maps. Concept maps are things like these. So I know it's small, but you can see very well. So I'm not an author of this. I just downloaded from the uh, CMAP tools website and they have several examples so you have what this talks about concept maps concept maps they represent organized knowledge associated with feel uh, that includes associated feelings or effect that add to concepts etc it's kind of easy to read but this is not attractive to your students. It was not to mine. So I said, you need to get a piece of paper, write this down. They said, ooh. I said, yeah, yeah, but it will be fun. Just do it. <laughs> so, and uh, they don't believe me anyway. So next, we have a little bit more color, maybe it's kind of small, uh, low definition, but it provides something. This is a new ex another example. Now you can see more things, not only um, dry concepts, lines, and just words, but you are adding some kind of media. Um, I was not able to access this um, um, C-map, but you have here a video probably. You have video, video, video. You have text. You have like an article with a bird down there. So it's more colorful. That leads me to think that if I add some kind of dynamic to the concept map too, I'm able to bring their attention. So if they are filming something, which is excellent, do this to upload to your or connect to your concept map. And now you are stating something and you are defining something and you are proving that you have done some kind of research. You know, you had did some kind of study and now you are able to show that to me. Is you are the author of that. Oh, so if I'm using my cell phone, my iPad, Galaxy 4, whatever they have, and I'm filming things, can I make the good time of that? Definitely, but you must have a purpose. You must connect that action, that whatever you're doing, with something that you want to accomplish. The concept maps, when it's, when it's designed, if you help to design a concept map with your students, basically you are creating, are you familiar with the word portfolio? That concept of portfolio? We have the uh, a presentation portfolio and the work portfolio. 
The work portfolio is what we do when we are in a classroom. So you are teaching, you are showing things, you are uh, analyzing, putting grades. And when you grade that, that work and say, hey, this is excellent, man, save that to the presentation portfolio. So that means open a new folder. Some, some people, they think this way. Open a new folder, copy and paste that thing right there. No, 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 no. This is just a, a folder. I want something else. I want life. So thinking out of the box, I was able to come up with the use of concept maps and connected web to with web to technology. That includes uh, YouTube, Google uh, Tools, uh, Prezi. So you have a paper that has, uh, how many of you have this paper here, please? Okay, so if you don't have, my wife will give it to you, honey. <laughs> So you have a list. This is also not made by me. This is from Blackboard. Uh, actually, uh, it was sent to me as I was studying. Um, so you have uh, VoiceThread, uh, Goldstar, Prezi, Animoto. On the, on the next column, you have a little bit of the description. Use, easy to use, easy, average, average. So you have a kind of descriptive, it's a very interesting thing that will help you. So to download a CMAP, you go to this place. I would like to ask you to write this down. I don't know if you will have access to this presentation. I sent to Colleen Halupa uh, the information so you may uh, access the press, this press presentation and everything that is there. This is from the Florida Institute of Human uh, Machine Cognition. Okay. Are you guys done? No. Nope, not yet? Okay. Okay. Okay, are you done? So next slide, it talks about Portfolios, I already have defined portfolios and e-portfolios. Uh, Web2 technology, basically the, the base definition, this came from Google. I just did a Google search. Basically what I was going to write is identical. Is when you move away from static pages to more dynamic things. When you incorporate to, when you call things that have some kind of life, you add that to your web pages. Um, also, I mentioned some of the, um, tools that you have already in this paper, Prezi, YouTube, Jing, Google Docs, and believe me, all your students, they know about those things. They know how to upload, they know how to do things. What we need to do is use that talent that they already have to do something for us and for them, even if they don't know exactly. So uh, the University of uh, Stanford University did a very interesting research that basically used uh, electronic, electronic portfolio system uh, it has the control group and experimental group, and the conclusion was that the experimental group succeeded at uh, remembering things. And this is what I want. Sometimes I got a student from a, uh, today and they asked, did you learn about this thing? Oh, no, I never heard about it. <laughs> you had, <laughs> because this is basic there. Is that true? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember now. So I don't want that. I want them to come ready for action. Okay. I have about five minutes, I think. No more, no more minutes? Okay, I want to just show you this thing. This is the concept map, also not from, uh, from me, but you have a kind of uh, integration. Concept map, and I'm calling the presentation that I was presenting to you, and the other one. So. I'm just showing that it's possible to integrate with CMAPs, uh, web pages, videos, all kinds of tools classified under Web2 technologies. So you shouldn't start your class with a huge concept map saying this is what we will do here. No, no, no. Build a concept map with them. As they do things and you make, it's not a class CMAP, it's individual one. So you have a folder, you have a shared place, and you have a private area within the CMAP tools. So you could have for your, each student that kind of a folder, and they will incorporate that video, 
that they found out that article, their writings, and you may call and connect. So video supports a statement based on a concept map well designed. So when you start to integrate this way, you will see things happening. So, um, and this is another presentation. It basically talks about constructive uh, relationships among students. It was done by me. And the only thing I want to show you goes here, the formula. Motivation, quality, satisfaction, and trust. All of them connected, they lead to student success. So you need to walk a mile or two with your students. You must do that. So adopt their technology, adopt their expertise. Make them now to walk with you consciously. OK, I will do this with you. And finally, you will see, in my opinion, this is how I've been uh, testifying in my class face to face. They start enjoying. They are not smiling to me more. <laughs> so they smile, but the computer is closed. OK, thank you so much for your time, and I hope this will be helpful to you. God bless you.